Now I feel like Jon Snow in Game of Thrones. That's a top tip. If I had a mic, I'd drop it. Oh my God, you will not believe this mess. We have had some serious thunderstorms here this weekend. And this yard has had some finishing efforts in it, which are now in that yard. And I think they've spooked in the thunderstorms and they've banged the water trough. If you can see it there, and it's on, the, it's on a bit of a list. And look at this. What a swamp. Look, at, look, if I just put any weight on there, I'm going through. So I've got to clean out this end of the shed, but it's so wet, I can't put it in a trailer. I'm going to have to go and take it round and put it in with the silage pit, which is even more annoying because we need to get muck out of the silage pit and we're just not getting there because the ground is so wet now, we can't travel. And every time it's dry, we're just absolutely mad on silage in and God knows what else. Oh, I'm just starting to get a little bit worried, to be honest, that we're not going to get everything out before the winter comes. On a happier note, these things look absolutely incredible. We've got cattle going all the time at the minute, so at least the bank's rolling, that's one positive. But yeah, I'm starting to get a bit stressed for the winter. Honestly, the best way to describe this muck is soup. It is just, oh, rank. And it's just so wet. And we haven't got a trailer with a hydraulic backboard. So there's just no way we're gonna get this anywhere. So we just gotta put it with the rest of it. It's just, oh, just another job we're gonna do them without. Honestly, it's just started to dawn on me that next week is October. October and we have still got so much to do a week 10 days ago I was so positive I was like we've got loads of time now I feel like Jon Snow in Game of Thrones because winter is coming and I don't know how we're gonna be ready I really don't also I might add that the more time I spend with cows inside of sheds the more time I realize the cows should never be inside of sheds <laughs> Check this out, I managed to get a couple of buckets full of the really wet stuff over the back of the size pit so it didn't run out. Look at the water coming out of here. Check that. Jesus. No wonder it are a mess in there. My Lord. So we're gonna try and square this trough up now with the Palatines so it sits level and we're gonna put a new ball cock washer in there as well. So hopefully it won't run over anymore. That's that trough done. Let's open this gate up and run them girls back round. Come on girls. Come on girlies out there then. Come on out. Come on ladies. Good girls. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tackle these pens because they've been up for months. Barely used them at carving and um, just not got around to taking them down to be quite honest. The weather, is disgusting, so I'm not going out there. So I'm going to take these down and run in with a bucket and just tidy it up, and that'll be a good job done. Oh, you heavy buggers! Oh, you fighter! Bateman built these to last. I can see the health and safety executive having a field day at me for carrying that bad boy. Oh, tied up, we're tied up. Right, I'll get the bucket in now, swaz that away, and that'll be another job ticked off. Oh yeah, check this out. This is something we've kind of got in the habit of doing. These hurdles, obviously kind of dangerous, big and heavy. So we now chain them to whatever they're going to be leaning against. So there's a bar 
attached to the wall up there. And we've chained those so when they're stood up, they don't fall on you. Now obviously that's like a safety thing for us, but we're kind of aware of the hazard. But obviously I've got my little boy. He doesn't really come on the farm, but as he gets older, that's going to be a hazard. Like he's going to see them and be like, oh, I can climb on them. And obviously we have Finley come as well. Now Finley's what, 14? That's the kind of thing he probably wouldn't be aware of. He's not from farming background, so he could quite easily just like, oh, I'll climb up there and then next thing they fall on you and you can get really hurt. So we've started sort of chaining them back. We use chains rather than string too, because string snaps, doesn't it? So yeah, that's a top tip. Beautiful. Finally, a brief reprieve in the weather. Dad's coming to start and move these herbal lay bales that we made last week. I am in the red clover field. So we've had the cows and we've ran them across this field to graze it down because it wasn't really long enough to mow it again, but we wanted to get it down because we're gonna put this into SFI and we need to stitch some seed into it. As you can see, the cows have kind of, it's been quite wet, but the cows have made a not too bad a job of chewing that down. They haven't really made any mess at all, which is nice. Now, one thing we have started doing is we've started buffer feeding the cows, mainly to slow the rotation down a little bit because grass growth now is probably a bit slower than it has been, even though, to be quite honest, it's not been the best few months for growing grass. We had a good spring, but then it kind of died off in July. So we've started buffer feeding with a bit of hay, and these are the first two days. So this field lasted four days for a mob of about, I don't know what it was, 60 odd cows and then the followers so like 120 cattle they had a fence line down there and then we gave them a bale of hay for the first day and then this was the second day here but then if you look over here when we got onto day three and day four they ate a lot so it just took them a couple of days to get onto it but now absolutely loving the stuff now what that's done is it's meant that we've slowed the rotation down by well this field for example we got about an extra day so it's meant that we can really just gradually start and build a bit of cover in front of the cows and then hopefully we'll keep them out a little bit longer weather provided of course the reason i've come here is i've bought a hedge cutter because i want to get this hedge cut so that we can overseed and i don't run back on the seeds but that hedge there is three years growth you can see that white marker there's a gas main from the gas main down to that willow tree it just sits wet dad has had a bit of a look and in the ditch down there there is a, a route going across which he seems to think is a problem and it's holding up the water that's coming from the ditch to the other side. But the other side of there is Christmas trees right to the ditch. So you can't get at it to clean it out or do anything with it. I'm not sure if you can see it, but in there, you'll see the base of the tree and it's kind of rooted on that side and it's grown down and into the bottom of the ditch. And we think it's blocking all the water, which is kind of an issue because that takes the water from the other side of this, where the Christmas trees are. And it also takes all the water from off the bank leading up to Shilton. All the water from the village comes down that ditch. Then obviously if it gets to this point and it's got nowhere to go, our fields get wet. So the job now, we're gonna try and cut this down. Dad's gonna try and get the bales moved. And hopefully this will be in a good position that if we do get a bit more dry weather, we can get here and overseed. But we are waiting on the seeds to come. Apparently there's a big demand on SFI seeds at the minute. So we're just hoping and praying it gets here before we kind of run out of time. Mother Nature's back at it again, but I've got a cut. She looks mighty fine, but you can't see for rain. Anyway, everything's starting to get a bit sticky. So 
back to the yard it is. Got a flat tire on the bale trailer, great. We've got another one on the old green trailer, brilliant. But in some more positive news, Hurls have delivered the grass seeds. Now this is the th Sam 3 Herbal Lay seed we have bespoke mixed. There's another 46 acres of this to drill, but to be quite honest, I think it's a bit too late. However, they have made us a bespoke mix for the red clover fields. So I'm gonna go get the drill on and then we'll calibrate up with that because I still think we've got time to do the overseeding because the grass and that will protect it. But yeah, new lathes, nah, it's too late. Whilst I'm doing that, Dad's took the PTO shaft off of the rake and he's shortening that so that we can put it on the 6410, which if we do ever get the chance to go sizing again, and it's big if, then at least we can use that tractor. I've just got to make sure there's not much seed in here. Nah, there's a little bit, half a bag, something like that. That's SAM bespoke mix, so that needs to come out. Then we need to recalibrate this with the other mix for the red clover, and then at least we'll be ready if it does ever come dry. This is gonna go wrong. Ooh, that's surprising success. Let's make sure we calibrate it right this time. Seven kilos per acre, not a bag. Oh, Jesus Christ, this is tight. Oh, it's raining. Jesus Christ, get it in the shed. We need seven kilos. So we need 700 grams in the bucket when we're done. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16. How much have we got in here then? Oh, that doesn't look too bad. Raided mother's kitchen again. She'll be thrilled. Come on, girl. Miles off. 382. Right, here we go again. Two, two, four, five, six, two, fifty-three, fifty-four, fifty-five. Oh, a bit more in there this time. Oh, but as you know, we're at a kilo. Somewhere in between would be nice. Third time lucky. Oh. 707. You ain't getting better than that. If I had a mic, I'd drop it. Actually, I do have a mic. Oh yeah, tighten you up. Woo. Right, see you when the sun shines. Right, I'm gonna go and take these scales back to my mother before she realizes they're gone. And then I'm gonna go and fall out with some of them tires. Whatever you get up to this weekend, have a good one. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in a bit. Ta-da. Hey, if you haven't seen it already, why not check out this video? Or you can subscribe by clicking on that logo. Alternatively, head to www.boldysfarm.com where you can read more about the farm, check out some blog posts, or treat yourself to some of the amazing clothing that we wear here every single day. Cheers.